Hello everyone. Welcome to this video. In this video, I wanted to go and do a recap over the JavaScript code and the concepts and how to uh, uh, type them out in the proper syntax or in the syntax that I was basically uh, learned and trained in. So, let's begin. Okay, so as we were saying before for, with JavaScript, um, we learned about uh, comments and how to comment, um, put comments in our code. And usually there's several different types of uh, comments that we can put in. There's the single line comment, which uh, this is a single line comment. And then there's the multi line comment. That's anything in between these these symbols here. This is a multi, multiple line comment for when you have a lot to comment on. Okay, so that's how you comment in JavaScript with those two uh, methods there. And then we went over uh, variables by uh, how to create a variable with the var keyword and then the variable name. Let's just say uh, for this one we would do car equals and then for a string you would use double quotes or single quotes. Either will do. And then you would just add the, um, you would just add the string or character um, for car. Um, also, if you wanted to make it a number, okay, number for um, a variable, you would just uh, assign it a number. Um, and it doesn't matter whether this right here is a integer, right, and then you would just give it a, uh, a semicolon at the end. Uh, integers are just whole numbers, one through infinity, and then you have floats, which is uh, anything with a decimal sign in it, um, or a point sign. So this is a float, okay? And then, as we said, uh, strings and characters, they need um, quotes around them. Numbers do not, right? And then, other than that, to make a constant, which is a variable that does not change its value, you just use the uh, keyword const, and then you would um, say, you, you would give it a, a name, which is whatever the name is that you wanted to give it, and then you would assign it a value of whatever you wanted to whatever you wanted to call it Big Mac 2 right and then again that will be in between quotes and then you would end it with a semicolon now the reason why we're going over all this is because I should have did it in the code earlier but because of time we wanted to go ahead and um, uh, do the tutorials based off of code that I had already created earlier. Uh, that way I didn't have to do a whole lot of typing. And actually a lot of the code was based off of uh, tutorials that I, ha I myself had either learned on YouTube or through um, the online school W3 schools. So if a lot of that code looks familiar, that's the reason why. Um, so going on, you can see that anytime you see this, this, these symbols here, this means these are comments. And usually with variables and uh, constants, if you see an equal sign, that usually means that you're dealing with a variable. Okay. Uh, and then this equal sign is considered a operator. And in this instance, the operator is assigning uh, a variable a value. Okay, and even with this constant, uh, this is the constant name, this is the variable name, 
this this operator is assigning these constants and variable these variables and constant it's assigning it on a value uh, a value okay all right and so we we go over that and then let's see we go over an array which in JavaScript you use the uh, var keyword again and then you can just um, give it um, an array name and then you give an assignment and with an array you use the brackets right okay and then anything in between the brackets and an array is considered an element and just so you know with arrays elements are zero based that means instead of counting it one two three four five you would count it zero one two three four five or etc okay and then in here you just give it whatever value you see fit okay and uh, let's see you do like for this one you do four comma and with this one you would do Chevy or whatever vehicles you want to put and the great thing about uh, arrays is it's a variable that can hold multiple types of um, of uh, uh, data types okay so you can have strings in it you can have numbers in it you can have uh, integers and then you can have floats in it as well okay that's the great thing about arrays and then after that usually to read an array you would use a loop alright so in this case what we're talking about would be a for loop now JavaScript has many different types of loops I only went over one if you go to W3 schools under uh, JavaScript and several other languages you will see that there are more than one type of loop you got the for loop you got the for each loop you got the while loop um, they each have a, a little bit of syntax differences but usually even amongst the different programming languages whether it's Perl, Python, PHP, C, C++ loops are going to look the same just the syntax will be different but the overall um, way that you you create and deal with the loop will be the same and then for this one you uh, want to go ahead and do four and then you do the you do the uh, the uh, parentheses and then you can go ahead and uh, put in your um, your variable which in this case would be four zero semicolon and then you might want to do let's see I is let's see you would do I is less than let's say vehicle right and then we want to close that out again and then we wanna what do we want to do with it oops we want to make it a semicolon to begin with and then we want to go through and we want to read everything that we see in that um, oops Maybe I should stop talking and start typing more. And then you want to go and see, you want to read everything that's within this array, right? So then you do that, then you do your squiggly, or what I call squiggly brackets. Oops. Right? And then you would make your syntax like that. and then you would go up and usually for readability you want to make a space like that right and then you would go text plus or e plus and equal plus equal and then you would put in the um, the array name and then you would put in again um, the square brackets and then you would put in I right 
and then you would do plus again and then you would go ahead if this was on a uh, HTML document you would want to go ahead and print it out line by line right and then you would go ahead and do that you would want to make um, quotes in between that and then you would want to go ahead and close it out with the semicolon and what that would do for the loop is it would uh, first you need to have a variable to initialize and make that zero so it would start from zero and then you would want to come over here and you would want to take that variable and you say as long as the variable is less than the array which our array name is a vehicle is vehicle then go ahead and print it out one at a time all the elements in the vehicle array right and then you would come down here and you just right here you, you what you're doing is you're telling the loop how you want to view it on the uh, in the browser and you would just want to do it you would want to view it by text of course you would also need to have your uh, your veritable for text as well that you would want to put up here too so you would put it as text and then you would do equal and then oops you want to make a space and then you would want to do a you would make the text empty right so you come down here and it would print print out the text or the vehicle array one at a time one on each line one one under the next one so this is a, a an html uh, tag for a new line and that that's how you would um that's how you would go ahead and create your for sign your for loop like that we also went over a function right so we created a function with the uh, keyword function and then we gave it a function name fun fact then we went we did the um, the parentheses space and then the squiggly brackets and then old school old school uh, programmers did it this way all right but as well you can go ahead and do it this way as well okay it doesn't really make a difference but I do it this way because that's how I learned was through the old school way but then in between here you just put in your code right code code and then whether or not you wanted to return something return code which would print it out to the screen or in this case it would print it out to the browser website okay and so after you do that you want to call your function and to call your function you just put in your function name oops like I say I need to learn how to type and actually there's no space right there and that's how you would call your function name right so you would create your function put your code in and a function is just a block of code that you can use over and over again you would usually want to create a function when you have uh, uh, multiple things you might have a for loop in there you might have a few variables you might have a few conditional conditional statements you might even have an array that's going to be quite a bit of code you can use that over and over again why not just put it all in a block which is what a function is and what it does right and then once you create your function you call your function here's the function name and I'm sorry that needs to be there and once you do this you create your function with this syntax then you go ahead and call it all right and you may hear the word function 
you may hear the word uh, method. A method is a function that you use in uh, uh, object-oriented programming language, um, as well as you may hear of a property. A property is a variable that's used in object-oriented language as well. So. I just wanted to go over that syntax with you real quick so that you can see how that works. Um, this is going to help you out when you start creating your own code um, because you're going you're gonna to need to know and realize this because without having certain syntax and, and doing it properly, your code may or may not work. Say like one simple thing that usually happens a lot happens with even the most experienced coder or programmer, you may forget, like for this variable right, variable right here, you may forget to, um, to add the semicolon to close out your statement. Okay. Now I forget with uh, JavaScript whether you need to end it with, uh, with a semicolon. Um, some languages, you, you don't have to use it. Some languages are absolute where you do have to use it. But if you get to that point, um, you might want to go back over your code and say, oh, I didn't have a semicolon, or I didn't have a, 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 a colon. All right. Um, another one is you may forget to uh, assign a value to your variable name. All right. And you might just have that. That will work, but if you try and call it somewhere in your function and you still haven't assigned it um, uh, a value, you may get an error message. So little simple uh, debug things like that can help you out. You know, just make sure that you give it a name of some type or some type of a value. Okay. Another thing that you may want to uh, be careful about is this um let me see i just i just thought of it but i just i just forgot about it just got a brain fart but uh let me see i think i think that's about it as long as you remember these simple things it'll help you out especially like i say with learning other languages besides javascript this type of um this type of uh syntax now not all uh, languages will um, have you use a keyword, okay? This is specific to JavaScript and maybe one or two other languages, but using variables, using constants, um, using arrays, using loops and functions, and then calling the functions, that's something almost all uh, programming languages use. Not just uh, not just JavaScript. So learning these basic concepts will help you in uh, experience when you want to learn other programming languages. So thank you very much. I hope you learned something today. I hope that uh, we were able to help you clear any questions you may have had throughout these series. So thank you for looking at my video. Please like and subscribe, and you have a good day.